Hello and thank you very much for joining me in the studio in sunny Wales. Yes, this is where we paint away the stress of everyday life and today I'm going to be revisiting how to paint trees in acrylic. Now I get asked this question no end of times in the comment boxes and things like that below. So stay with me. I put together a nice little compilation of uh, videos that I have done and I want to take you through them step by step um, and at the end I'll just let you run wild. <laughs> so without further ado let's have a look at the painting and how to get started. So if you've never painted a tree before grab your brush get some paint and let's get started. Okay, so anything you need to do, you need to, to basically mark out and draw a rough tree shape just to get you started. And as you get more experienced, what you can do then is just freehand this with paint. There you go. So um, this is a painting I did go oh, years and years and years and years and years ago. And um, some of you may have seen it before, some of you haven't. So I thought I would revisit this um, painting. So as you can see, I'm just doing a few little circles because trees are bushes. Bushes within bushes within bushes. And the bigger the bush, we call it a tree. <laughs> so just grabbing a, a little tiny short flat. I think that was an angled short flat and a little bit of burnt umber. And um, as we normally do, we block out a section of paint. Now you can use just an ordinary paintbrush with this and some paint. You don't need to do the drawing. But what I want to do is bring you into how to paint the tree. And sometimes it's better just to have a little sketch so you can follow. Um, and that just makes it life a little bit easier for yourself as you're starting out with acrylics. So we're looking at the... Um, the canopy now and we're going to underpaint the leaves so basic mix a little bit of burnt umber a little bit of black and some cardinal yellow gives us a green as you can see i'm i'm looking at my my green scale um that i've got in my left hand and i'm looking for a quite a dark shade <clears throat> looking um i just think i just picked up a little bit of lamp black there just to darken that off there you go so just mix in that. You can use a palette knife or a brush. I prefer to use a palette knife. So we need a stippling brush. Um, of something that's a little bit splayed is great. So you just tap that into your paint and off you pop. Trying to follow those circles that you've uh, drawn in, that's always a good idea because it just gives you a little bit of shape, especially when you're just starting out with acrylics and learning to paint. You need a little bit of guidance and uh, it's like having stabilizers on the bait uh, on a bike if you've got stabilizers on a bike you're not going to fall off so if you've got a little draw in you're not going to make major mistakes so just a little bit of stipple just underneath and put in some shadow on some grass area as well because there's going to be a shadow with a tree okay so that's the first coat of paint so what we need to do now is think about a mid-tone or highlight leaves part one, I've called it here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So all we've done is added a little bit more yellow or you can put a, a, a glob of yellow one side and just add some of that dark color to it. So you can get just a slightly lighter color. And you should be able to see that on the white. I've left the area white instead of painting the sky because it just sets off that tree a little bit more for you to give you a little bit more of an idea of what the tones are like. Um, I've decided to put a little bit of a bush there as well just to show you can use this um, method with bushes. So again we've lightened the green up. Um, a little bit of white this time just a small touch of white into that mix just to lighten the color and you can see that already we're starting to develop some leaf shapes so the dark colors we put in place are the shadows and now we bring in mid-tones and highlights you'll see that demonstrated onto the grass area and the bush as well and you can see it starting to come to life 
don't be afraid to do a little drawing just as a bit of a guide and again highlight leaves part three so you could see my little green scale there you can make one of them quite simply by just doing different tones of green it doesn't have it doesn't have to be accurately mixed as long as you go dark mid and a light so adding those flecks of light now is bringing the painting to life and getting the tree to set out now getting a little bit of burnt umber and black to shadow one side of the tree just to give it a little bit of depth and as you noticed on the grass area what i did was flick up a couple of little light lines to emulate some grass don't forget the branches now we're using a script liner that's a very very thin brush and a very very thin mix which i'll take you on to later on and show you how to do that um, i'm just going to put some branches in place just to give this old cronky tree some character and that's the thing you need to add character to trees make it look as realistic as you could possibly get it so we're nearing the end of this one this is quite an easy way to paint a tree put some lines to emulate some bark and um, just have a little bit of fun so we just need to highlight the trunk a very thin brush a bit of yellow a bit of burned umber maybe just a smidgen of uh, white and then we just put in a little bit of highlight on the side of the tree there where the sun has been glinted into the one side so as you can see the leaves um, on the right hand side just a little bit lighter than they are with the left hand side and um, just putting a little bit of shadow a little bit of light in to the grass area don't worry about that grass is easy once you've mastered a tree you can paint a grass and you can paint bushes and then you can paint all different types of trees Add in some detail and some shadow so i just allowed it to dry and i'm just going to glaze over with some very thin paint just to add some shadow to give this tree a little bit of depth and um, give it a try give it a try and before you know it you'll be uh, painting trees and landscapes without any drawings and that's the most important thing keep practicing 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 that way you'll become as best you can be so we'll just add a few flowers now just a little few drops here and there little drops of yellow maybe some red maybe some blue i don't know just to give this just a, a little bit of a, a life and realism and um, my camera is slightly out of focus there because i was using an old compact camera believe it or not a few white daisies and we've got meadow grass how easy was that so if you want to paint meadow grass with a tree this is the way to go just final details and there you go one easy tree and what i'm going to do now is we will proceed to move on to uh, another painting and um, this time i will put a bit of um, blue in the sky we're just going to add a few um clouds just to give it some realism as you can see just blending those clouds in blending blending you don't have to over paint trees this is not about um, accuracy you can see i was using a little bit of a reference there so fluffiness just a little bit of fluffiness in the sky some of these clouds are so far away it doesn't really matter using the same principle now with a stippling brush and i'm going to put some distant trees in so when you paint in something like this it's always the same process you're building from darks to lights and if you've got something in the distance you need it a little bit on uh, the light side like misty you can see i'm putting a few little trees and bushes in same thing as we did earlier on in the first lesson but this time without a drawing which is um, the thing to do this is where your imagination can run wild try not to overpaint but on the other hand try to keep it as real as you possibly can so i've laid out a couple of marks there where i think there's going to be a tree so we're going to put that in place as i said once you get experienced you can just throw these in with the paintbrush 
and um, you don't need the drawing. As I said, a drawing is basically like stabilizers on the bike. So master shadows and think about lights when you're painting as well. So uh, always look at other artists and see what they do. And there's a little script line that coming in just to put some distant trees into the background. As again, just to add that realism to the painting. Again, just throwing in a little bit of stippling. Bring in the lighter color in place now. As you can see, the process is exactly the same as the first tree we did. So we just need to make that a little bit more blurry. There's so many leaves in these trees. There's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of them. So you can't paint every individual ones. It's impossible. What you do is create an illusion. And that's what we do as artists. We paint illusions. The shadows and lights to create some forestry floor. Just bringing that color together, blending it around. And there we go. Just going to add um, a little bit of a glaze over this. Um, you can do this sometimes um, um, with, a, with a glaze wash. I'm not going to go too much into that at the moment, but it will add luster to your painting. But as a beginner, you don't really need to worry about uh, that. I'll talk about that in, in another lesson. But all I'm doing now is bringing in highlights creating that depth leaving some of those dark colors in place and creating those shadows that we will see and then bringing in some of the lighter highlights again small touch of white bringing that foreground together looking at the midground another quick wash of um, very very thin paint just to blur back the background I'm just smudging that in place with a, um, a sponge and a hairdryer. And as I said, that is an advanced technique, so don't go worrying about that. All we just need to do is keep that background blurry and bringing in a little bit of green here and there now, just over those highlights, just to give them a little bit of definition. If you can see that I'm using different yellows, I'm using yellow ochres and um, a raw sienna, I'm using green, I'm using a little bit of Mars black with yellow to create a green. So all these wonderful colors that we can find in the forestries and where you live, um, think about the colors if you're gonna paint something in your local area. And again, just building, building, building. I'm just gonna smudge that off a bit. As I said, don't worry about that process. You just concentrate on painting trees. I'm going to put a couple of fir trees in here now just to show you that we can do that. Again, dark, mid-tones and lights. An old cronky old tree there, just darkening up the bark on this one side and looking at that fallen log on the ground of the forestry floor. Again, just smoothing that off. This was a glazing painting. Uh, the, the, the lesson actually um, was about glazing, but we're not going to talk about that, as I said. So just ignore that part if you see me doing that again. So I've just put a bit of mid-tone into the um, background trees. I'm using a bit of heavy structure gel because I didn't have any bo heavy body paste. I wanted the, the, the paint to be right raised off the canvas so again another technique that you will learn as we go on with these lessons but on this one there we go we just put in the highlights on those fir trees again with the uh, trunk i'm just going to put a bit of uh, white onto that tree now maybe an old silver birch or something that's uh, that's died or it could be just rotten i think they were just rotten you just make it up. It's your world. It can be anything you want and don't let anybody tell you any different. Again, a couple of different brush strokes. 
instead of painting traditionally just dragging it down trying to get that roughness and barky texture we put in some old cronky old branches there it's an old fir tree that's just past its sell by date basically again some highlights on those fir trees there they're the baby ones <laughs> just bringing that together don't forget the trunks and again getting some detail in just bringing the um foreground together now trying to create this forestry floor and all these wonderful colors that you will see in these forestries you can look at the distant trees in the background they're quite blurry and misty that was the idea of putting that mix in as i said i will talk about that um, particular technique in another lesson for you so just concentrating on shadows let's trying to give these old rickety old trunks some depth it's looking quite nice but remember rightly i think i sold this one on a craft fair what i want to do now is i'm just picking up some mars black i'm i'm, I'm thinning that down a little bit with some flow improver i can picking up a bit of just ordinary water just to thin that down the the mix that i've got is got a little bit of um the base mix in it the acrylic base mix which is uh, important to keep the 45 percent rule because if you over thin acrylics with water they tend to flake or they will flake i don't say in, in every case that'll happen but there's a possibility and you know me i always wear in a shade of caution so um i'm just gonna chuck in that's not as now that's what happens if it's not thin enough so what you want to do is there we are one like that up, dump, dun, da, 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 da. another one like that and one like that everybody's got to have a friend da, 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 da. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. You want to, you want your hands to shake a little bit if you're doing this. Don't do too many of these. They're going to be obscured anyway. But all we're doing is just putting a couple of distant trees, basically. It's wiggly, wiggly lines. So, when you're painting the tree, what you want to remember, as I've said before, is you come up like that. Say for argument's sake, there's a Y look. And on every Y, there's a little V, and there's another little V, and there's another little V. So if you bear that in mind, before long, you have a tree that's got a lot of branches on it. We got a little bit thicker. I think I'm a bit of thicker, Mike. I'm going to take that up there. A bit of Australian come out, and we might. A bit of Australian. <laughs> a bit of New Zealand. Get out, mate! <laughs> Get out, Ian! <laughs> Ian's one of the administrators out in New Zealand. And um, he's a very nice gentleman. He's helped us out a lot with the, um, with the, the, the family art group that we've got. And, um, I, I, and I really do appreciate his help. Along with Pat as well who is out there in America and of course our dawn because if if we didn't have our dawn we wouldn't have a Clive and Dawn once a week <laughs> so yes hello everybody yes I've got to mention them because I get a bit upset if I don't <laughs> okay so let's get a little bit of moisture on this palette and let's pick up I don't know let's pick up a bit of this raw sienna I think it was raw sienna wasn't it it was okay and it's as simple as just dapping a couple of little marks like this that's all you've got to do just tap 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 just a couple a couple of tap 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 taps like that a bit of raw sienna that's all you want to do just tap you could do it that way Another bit more raw sienna. I'm just tapping 
a couple of marks like that. Great stuff, have fun. This is what this is all about, is fun. Fun, 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 fun. And I have a lot of fun. Yes, I do. I really enjoy painting immensely. And as you can see, it doesn't matter where you put these dots, you can put them anywhere you want. So, but what you're looking for is something to represent some sort of tree. And if you can do that, then eventually what's going to happen is this is going to turn into a lovely little painting, a little nice warm painting. And um, we'll just change the flavour up a bit now. We'll just add a little bit of that yellow ochre into that on the palette, mix it on the palette. Just making sure my camera is recording because I've done that before now. I've been talking and I've never switched the camera on. <laughs> and then just change the color up a little bit like that and just in between there now just build in a couple of these colors like that bringing in a mixing that those two together just changing the flavor it's like cooking a cake just changing our flavor up like that let's bring a bit of that burnt umber was it burnt umber Lump-dum-dum, yes it was. <laughs> Good to ask why I put them cards there. It's not for you, it's because I forget what cards I'm using. <laughs> and then we'll put that in this corner there like that. Again, just put them in there. Just, just merge them in, merge them in like this. This is a lovely, lovely autumn, autumnal, autumnal, autumnal painting. You can get a bigger brush, I suppose. You could, could if, you, if you really wanted to. And um, these are all earth tones. These are all autumn colours. If you look at them, they're like autumn colours. I just want to darken that area up like that. There you go. And I painted over those trees. And and, and this is what this is what you've got to do. Is 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 that? Let's, in fact, let's put another one there. I'm not happy with that. Let's put um. Let's get another line in there like that. And you can do this if you if, if you feel as if you want another little tree, a little friend for the other ones, then put one in. This is your paint, this is your world. As Mr. Bob Ross used to say, this is your world. You 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 are the master. You can move mountains, you can create trees and forests and landscapes. Yellow ochre now, I'm going into some yellow ochre. I'm just bringing in some lightness now into this area like that. I'm changing that flavour up, just getting these colours to mix and they're all going to love, they're all mel melding with that blue. Look, they look love stand up really well against that blue. And this is, this is, this is what we're going to try and do now, just create, create. Create and educate, that's one of my two principles. It certainly is. Inspire, nurture. We nurture our children, we help them, we create with them. Let's pick up a little bit of red. Let's pick up a bit of that cardamom red and just just change the flavour. Let's just put a little bit of redness in there. Red is a very good colour. It's a very strong colour. It's, 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 it's an inviting colour. It brings the eye into a painting. And if, if you want to direct an eye into the painting, then red is a, a good colour to actually do that. Okay, so let's, let's bring a bit of that yellow ochre. I'm not washing my brush. All these colours are mixing, mixing on my brush. So I'm getting all these to merge together. They're not going muddy. You don't want them to go muddy. Occasionally I'll take the excess off. I can go into because I want to go into some yellow now and I want to bring a bit of I want to bring a bit of that yellow in. Like that. And if the yellow is not quite strong enough, put some one side, get a little bit of titanium white, mix the titanium white with it, sparkle that white up. That's going to give it a little bit more opacity so it's going to stand out a little bit more because um, you, you'll tend to find a lot of yellows uh, tend to be a little bit transparent so or semi-transparent even so you want to you want to try and change these these flavors up work with the color work with what's behind work with what's in front change them up just get a little bit more of that sienna mix and change that in there put it in there this is a this is a forestry or just a pile of trees even we don't know do we we don't know where this is or what it is 
are we looking to do here is just get some lovely lovely colors in and I'm going to pick up a little bit of hookers green yes I'm going to put a little bit of green in there you and there and everywhere because not all these leaves have gone brown or yellow and what it what it is because the the way the leaves are they they, they store a lot of this um i forget what it's called now i have embarrassed myself <laughs> you know what i mean yes i can't think my brain goes a bit weird sometimes okay let's i will wash my brush now because things are starting to get a little bit mucky and you'll know through experience what i mean so i'm just cleaning my brush very 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 quickly as you know if you've painted with me before I use two different pots of water. So I'm going back into a little bit more of that yellow walk and I'm just bringing a bit of that in like that. Just, this is a lovely therapy. If, if, if you've got somebody that's not feeling very well, then give them a paintbrush and, and sit down and, and, and show them how to do this type of painting because this is going to give them so much joy, so much fun, so much excitement and just mix matching colors now. I'm just picking colors up at random. This will give them so much joy. It'll make them feel a lot better. One of the best cures I've found for a headache is actually coming into the studio and doing a little bit of painting. It certainly is. And I think it's just a wonderful, wonderful way of getting that therapy. If you've got a bit of a headache, like I said, do a little bit of painting, do a bit of coloring, pick up a coloring book even. Okay, just wiping my brush, picking up a bit of green. I'm chucking a bit of green in the background like that. Oh, we've gone a bit mad here today. We certainly have. This is nothing but a mass of dots onto a canvas. I don't know. What are we going to do with this? Now, we're going to have to let that dry. Or in my case, I'm going to hit that with a hairdryer. Well, not literally hit it, but I'm going to, I'm going to dry it off. And then we will resume filming for the next stage. Okay, I've let that dry now. Um, I'm gonna, it's not all 100% dry, but I don't mind. Okay, so all I've done is I put some titanium white onto my palette, and um, I'm not gonna cut the overhead cam because basically all I'm you doing is picking up, say, titanium white. I'm not color mixing or anything, so I don't wanna waste video time. And now I've loaded my brush up. This is the three quarter inch flat, and then I've gotta be bold. We've gotta decide where we're gonna put these trees in like that <laughs> and sometimes if you're unsure that's the best thing to do there we go let's just put that in there like that now you can see that obviously my paint is not 100 percent dry behind but that's okay that's okay we can live with that because there's moss and stuff that lives on these trees and then we can brighten that up in just a second and um i'm going to give this one a little friend and i'm just going to come down like that didn't do a very good job with that air dryer Clive doesn't matter don't worry this is live well it's not live I can edit it out if I want to but I don't edit my videos if I can help it so what I'm going to do I'm going to just put these trees in place and then we go over them later on with a little bit more white I think that'd be the best thing to do and um okay so we need to put another one in now and this let's put a big one in there this is the daddy tree okay this paint is going to need a lot, a lot, a bit longer the the dry than I was expecting, but um, don't worry, you get the idea. We'll come back in and we'll tighten this up with some white when it's completely dry. But for the moment, let's just get let's just get this tree in place, and I don't want it straight. Okay, I want I want it to look rough as as I can, if I can. A bit more. Let's get a little bit more. Um, kitchen roll and let's take the excess off my brush um, I'm gonna go back back into some titanium white and I'm gonna put another another one I'm gonna put this one on a little bit of an angle that way I think I'm just gonna go like that and we put them in there like that let's make him a little bit bigger
Now you might be wondering what this block is there. I've got a, you may not see it. I've got a black block there and I've got this tack to my canvas with um, some blue tack and you see some of the paintings that I do, the little small canvases that are just floating around on my board and I blue tack them on. And um, the reason I do that is, is basically for videoing. You don't need to do that. You, you put these canvases in any position that you feel comfortable that you can paint with. And that is the key. Okay. So don't worry about doing what I do as far as my canvases are concerned. As I said, they are just for filming purposes. And I think we can leave that as it is for now. And I'm going to let that dry um, as, as long as I can to make sure it's completely dry before we need, move on to the next um, stage. Oh, so I've let that dry. I, I had to run out and um, sort the dog out and the cat and had a cup of tea. And I put some paintings back up on my wall. <laughs> so change it about a bit in here because I, I like a little bit of background yes I think it's lovely and you can see some of the work that's either in progress or has been done or hasn't been done <laughs> there we are so I try to put some little things up on the wall there so whether you I don't know if you've seen these by the time I videoed it but um yeah anyway uh, stop the waffle um this haven't dried out bad actually no it's dried out a little bit better and than I thought so um because the, the the birch trees aren't like pris, pris, pristine white are they 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 like a like a like a browny type of gray type of color so i think this has worked out quite well so let's see if we can't put some of the uh, black details on i'm going to show you two different techniques in how to do that okay so there's there's two ways we can do this um i'm, I'm gonna we can either use a palette knife or we can actually use a, a brush. So I'm going to try two different ways. I'm just going to pick up a bit of bit of black. I'm going to put a bit of this burnt and but I'm going to mix a little bit of that together. And that's just going to give me a little bit of a brown black. So I'm just trying to pick up a little bit of a, a ridge of paint just on the edge of my palette knife like that. And I'm just going to go and see what we can do. Let's just let the the paint come off the part knife like that and i'm not putting a lot of pressure on this palette knife i'm just letting the paint pull off it I'm going to just do that down the tree like that. A bit more paint on the part knife. There you go. And there's no set way that this pattern should be on these trees so don't worry too much about that and what we're going to do now when this is dry we're going to give it a little bit of shape um, around us to the tree so you can continue doing this with the part knife and you can just drag down like that pick up a bit of the tooth off the canvas let's mix a bit more let's get a bit more black over there let's get a little bit of Brown with that. I don't like mixing on a wet palette with my my palette knife. I should have a little palette, and I did have one, but it's I don't know where it's gone. But um, anyway, we'll just do with another one now with a palette knife, and in, in, in the same way, just let your, your brush, your brush, your palette knife, just just put the paint on where it wants to put a paint on. If you think about this too much, then you're not going to get. The, the 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 realism of, of of that and we can be a little bit too precise in some cases and i think silver birch trees are are, are wonderful trees in, in in any way so and this is good practice anyway for your, your palette knife because we will be using uh, the palette knife in some other tutorials later on 
I got some ideas of how we can actually use this to do a lesson. So let's just clean my palette knife off because I'm notorious for leaving them dirty. And let's uh, let's now go into the brush and let's let's see if we can do something with the brush and see if uh, we get a similar type of effect. Now I'm using it very loosely between my fingers again. Just getting that effect. And don't think too much about it. Just let the brush just dance across the surface of the painting. Don't don't push too hard. Don't try and, and paint these in like that because you'll get that. It, it doesn't look so real. Or use the brush like that. go this is a smaller tree so there's not going to be a lot of black on this one and that's it it's all you need to do as far as that is concerned now let's get our oh I just washed it <laughs> <laughs> oh dear we do have fun in the studio Clive yes we do okay let's get um let's get a little bit more of this yellow ochre and let's bring a couple of leaves here and there just bring a couple over on the front of these trees like that we can bring a bit of that raw sienna in and just dance these about like as if there's our trees going in between the leaves and things um, just fill up the little gap a little bit we've got a little bit of this yellow and white mix we, we did let's just dance a little bit of that around the canvas there you go so i just, just added just a little oh, bit more blue a couple of little leaves there, sky, just which you can catch it in front now if you wanted to do this the first coat there. i did the first part of the lesson i did if you wanted to do that with just gesso just and that you can of you can do that of course you can who just says you can't do that okay so i'm mixing some blue i'm mixing some white than i have as i've said together you can see this is a so lovely warm red um undertoned blue that I'm using it's, it's just like an ultramarine blue but it's not but it's got it's got that warm and uh, undertone I'm adding a bit of yellow to that now to make it a nice green and adding a bit more blue because I want it to be blue green add a bit more blue to it yeah, a bit more white I want this to look quite distant so I've got that lovely blue green which I'm just taking down with a lot of white there we go I'm just going to take the excess off my brush like that I'm just going to test this yeah that looks yeah does that that's a little bit I need to be a little bit bluer just for the sake of it so I'm looking for is a distant distant effect let's try again that's a little bit bluer there we go so we'll put some lines in like this like that there we go just drop a couple of lines in here and there and then here you i'm making this a little bit darker if you want to make it a little bit lighter you can please do that but my I, I, I want the, I want the color to come out on the camera so I, I'm gonna have to make things a little bit darker I'm just gonna get that pushing that in like that making it look like there's a mass of trees You can do this with a fan brush. Oh, Bob Ross was good at this type of stuff. He really was. There we go. Just getting that. Just use the very tip of the brush. 
the edge of the brush, that edge there. And then just very lightly, don't have to push hard. And you're just getting this. pattern in there like that. Getting a little bit more brush. Paint on your brush, some brush on your paint, as they say in Wales. <laughs> Get a bit more paint on your brush and leave a couple of little breaks. Because I know all these trees are full of leaves there. Some of them are quite bare. The birds have been there and they've been pecking on them and pulling them off. Pulling the, the brush to a nice sharp edge again. Again. Keep a, little, a couple of little longer bits and shorter bits and just put that down in there like that. Yeah, yeah. and then we, all, all, you, all you're doing basically is just building up some sort of a, a background of colour. Now, this needs to be about two shades like that in fact. It, looking at my painting that I can see, um, on my canvas, this looks as if it needs to be two shades lighter. Now, if I did that, you might not see it on camera because it might just fade away into the background. That's how light it's got to be. So just bearing that in mind, and also bear in mind that acrylics dry two shades darker. So whatever colour you decide you're going to use, mix it two shades lighter at least, so you can get the effect. Because when it dries, it'll dry darker. And matte. Acrylics dry on a matte finish. So if you wanted a glossy finish, then you can either glaze it with some um, glazing medium, which again is available on my web <laughs> website, as he says, as he drops the brush on the floor. Oh, getting too old, bend down there. Uh, www.clay5art.co.uk or use any other glazing medium. My glazing medium was is 100% pure acrylic resin, so it works really well for me. And um, the reason I make my own my mediums and my own paints is because I got total control over my own artwork. These are not the paintings I paint for commissions. The commission work is totally different to these, um, and I like my own paints for that. So um, there we go. And I save myself a bunch of money by making my own. <laughs> Let's just try that again. What we can do now is we, we want to set that back a little bit more, don't we? We want a little bit of um, mist and stuff in there. This is going to be snow um, coming in. It's quite a snowy day here. Um, not in Wales, but this could be in Wales. This could be in the Brecon or it could be in a forestry somewhere. i got a forest not far from where I live. So what we can do is we can get a little bit of titanium white. Um, now what I recommend you use for this is um, some mixing white. Uh, mixing white is not as opaque as titanium white but I'm using titanium white today uh, because I want it a little bit more opaque so the medium mix that I'm going to be using um, what that does is got a lot of um, a, 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 like a resin based thinner and because you can thin that down with water as well so that's all the moisture you're going to be using in your paints so it's not going to and break down the paints as much as just plain old water and um, that's why I recommend using it. I've used it for years in fact. So I'm just going to go very lightly as you can see very lightly just over this. The other thing it does is because it's a lot more stable than water it's got a, it's got it's got binders in it and um, by having binders in it then your paint is not going to lift as much. If, if you just did try to do this with water, you'd find that if your paint film wasn't really dry, then it would lift off. And that's not what you want, um, especially in a painting like this. Um, you don't want, there's a little bit of contamination on my, my canvas, but I'm okay with that. So just, just dull that back, just a touch like that. What I'm going to do now is just take the moisture off my brush, very lightly, just pull across like that. What that does, it kills the strength of the background colour that we put in the green and just puts a little bit of a mist effect. You can see the difference between that layer and that layer. That's the layer we've just dried, that's the layer we've just added and you can see this, the misty effect there. Now we can paint on top of that, that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow and some more of my, that's a medium yellow by the way. 
it's called daffodil yellow so if you want to pop along to the website www.clive5art.co.uk you're looking for daffodil yellow um because it's well spaced <laughs> so i'm going to put a burnt number to it quite nice dark a bit light a bit of white just to darken that down a little touch of black just to gray it off you can add white and black in the same mix because it's going to gray it ideally what you should do is mix a gray and use a gray to gray it down or a complement a complement to um, blue green basically um, would be something like um, um, a reddish orange Ready orange or something like that so complement the green is red so that'll dechromarize it or dull it back or you can add a little bit of gray to it that's fine as well so let's just check that color that's a little bit too dark so i just want to lighten that again i'm just going to put a good old clump of white in there don't be afraid to take your time and play around with these colors you can't rush it really um, I, I, I wouldn't want you to rush it try not to paint in the, t the same time scale as me what I suggest you do is you know watch the video and then pause it do a bit and then start the video back up pause it and do a bit and do it in your own time don't try and paint along at the same time scale as me I want a little bit darker than that now so <laughs> I did a bit too much white so I'm just adding a bit more black because I've tried doing that with um, different painting lessons that I've seen online and DVDs years ago like a Bob Ross video and you know and as a beginner it's very difficult to to try and keep up because as a, as, as, a, as, a, as a, an artist um, we know all the little tricks we know we know what this paint can do and what it can't do and here we are just using one brush at the moment same type of technique leave a couple of gaps Let's bring that down like that there you go I'm not going to see much of that tree anyway so just block it in like that and then we can do another one then maybe there on a bit of an angle he's had a bit of a wind a bit of wind blown there the wind blown high and the wind blown low, high, low, high, low. it's blown over Just make it look Christmas tree like you take your time you've got more time than I have you can put another little one maybe this down there like that there you go <laughs> yeah, it looks Christmassy doesn't it I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to that I'm just gonna change the flavor just a touch it's like baking a cake Sometimes we need to add a little bit more sugar to the cake to make it a little bit sweeter. <laughs> so let's put another one. Let's put this one like, uh, it's a bit old cronky that one. Not a bad winter that one did one year. He, he started growing and the wind was blowing and he grew and he, and then the wind stopped and he grew the other way. <laughs> there you go. The squirrels like this tree. Gives them fun. All the baby squirrels run up this tree and play in. It's their favourite tree in the old forest. There you are. And we can put a few bits and pieces now, bits of grass and stuff like that. We can, we can play around a little bit there like that. Just to make it look a little bit more foresty like. <laughs> Let's put another one, this in between there, like that. same brush this is a painting with one brush so far you know what the trees are like you in your world you can you can you can make the trees whatever shape you want them nobody's going to tell you off in fact let's do a tree here and let's do the tree the, the leaves going up because these are all sod mirrors these are happy this is a happy tree Yeah, he's a happy one. He's smiling, he is. 
because he's tucked away in a the corner then. He knows I'm not going to get blown away in the wind. Here we are, we've got a nice happy tree. So we've got sad trees and happy trees. <laughs> it pays to be mad. It does. So I'm going to get a little bit of burnt ember. Mixing that in there like that. And let's just put a few little different tones of colour. In fact, let's get a little bit of black. Let's just put a little bit of shadow on a couple of these trees. Just to give them a little bit of... Because they're, they're closer to us. So we can see a few more bits of detail and stuff. There you go. Just put a few bushes and twigs and all that other stuff there. Bring that down. Like that. Bring a bit of that colour down now. Cleaning your brush. Whoa, look at that. I think it's time we clean we dried that again so we got a little bit of distance there I hope you could see the distance I've got going there we're gonna put a bit of middle ground in now at the moment I would say that's the middle ground so maybe a little bit of foreground I think I'm just gonna work on a another maybe a big tree or something and we're gonna put some deers in there yes this is quite an expensive painting it's going to be too dear <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to get a little, I don't know, long detail brush like this, and I'm, I'm just going to make it, make it a little bit thinner. I'm just going to put a, maybe, a little tree that's got no leaves on it like that. A couple of little twigs here and there like this. Nice and thin. We know I need this nice and thin. There you go. Get a bit of black. Let's just put a couple of trunks in. Maybe like that. next bit I'm going to do is quite fun um, I'm just going to use any old brush this is just a, a this was a brush I was going to use for foliage but um, I just decided well I'll just as well use it now as you and I didn't want to clean the other ones anyway get a little bit of blue into my white so it's a bit of a, a blue white I'm going to do some snow in and I'm just going to drag some snow around there like that just dragging the brush gently onto the canvas. It's leaving us some of that under colour coming through. There you go. And you can get maybe just a little bit bluer as we come towards the front. I'll put a bit of that blue in there like that. Let's drag in it. Just have fun. Let the brush do what it wants to do. Just so it's not going to be finished yet. We haven't finished it yet, so don't worry. There you go. We could get a bit of snow. Don't want it too thick. This now, just an, a couple of these branches like that. Maybe it's a bit of snow down there. Very lightly touching. You don't want a lot. Just a powder of snow. It's just been wisping along 
It hasn't been really heavy snow, not today anyway. It's just a few whispers of snow just on on a couple of these branches like this, just to just so you can see this. It's been snowing. There you go. Some branches have got snow and some branches have got snow. It's been quite whispery. Whispering, whispering. I tell the birds what it's so Whispering grass those trees don't need to know There we go It's a bit of whisper Snow, like that Nice whispery snow, snow I do enjoy this I do enjoy this I'm going to get a um, Nice stiff brush Now um, I've got a toothbrush here There you go a nice toothbrush. I don't clean my teeth with this toothbrush because it's got paint on it. <laughs> I got one of those, um, I got one of those electric ones now. They're quite good. So I'm just moisten down my paint. I'm going to pull towards me. I'm going to get some snow into this now. So just put some whispery snow in like that. There we go. Let's put some whispery snow in. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. Oh, and don't forget like to click subscribe. I'm feeling Christmassy already.